Hi, I'm Dr. Aideen Doris and I am the lecturer on EC317, the Economics of the European Union. Um, so before I start telling you about the module, I just want to tell you that this is not a new module. Uh, this module's code used to be EC217, uh, but because only third year students have been able to take it for several years now, we've changed the code to reflect that fact. So it's not a new module, but an old module with a new code. OK, so let me tell you about the module. I'm starting off by showing you some photos of the destruction, the complete destruction that existed in European countries after the Second World War. Now, the Second World War was the second major war to bring European countries to their knees in two generations. And European leaders and thinkers realised that they needed a new way of discouraging European countries from solving their disagreements by going to war. Now, one of the ideas that they had was to increase cooperation between countries by making them more dependent on each other, particularly economically. So if my country's success depends on your country's success, you're less likely to want my country, uh, my country's downfall. Uh, so the idea was that if countries were bound together economically, using an institution that would require them to meet and agree on economic policies on a regular basis, they would be far more likely to cooperate with each other. And the institution they designed to increase European integration is now called the European Union. So this module is a module about the ways in which the EU promotes integration and the effects that integration has on national economies. That's what this module is about. So what do we mean by European integration? Well, initially in the 1950s, when it was called the EEC, the European Economic Community, the main mechanism used to promote integration was the promotion of trade between member states. Now, of course, Ireland wasn't a member until 1973, but when we joined, we signed up to this idea of increased international trade with our fellow member states. And so what the member countries did was they set up a customs union. So a customs union is a, a group of countries who act as though they were the one country for the purposes of trade. So they have, uh, just as there's no um, um, barriers between um, to, to trade between Dublin and Galway, for example, you don't have to pay any tariffs if you're shipping goods from Dublin to Galway, they decided that there would be no tariffs between member states, so between, uh, say, Italy and the Netherlands. Um, there would be no uh, tariffs or quotas. So those kind of um, impediments to trade would be removed uh, amongst member countries. In addition, they had a single uh, uh, tariff with external countries. So for example, uh, if uh, the, the US wanted to trade with an, um, an EU member state, it would pay the same tariff whether it traded with the Netherlands or with Italy. And we'll explain the rationale for that. So literally, they became as one country for the purposes of trade. Now, later in the 1980s and 1990s, the EU uh, decided to push for even greater integration in terms of trade. So they realised that um, while there were no tariffs or quotas between member countries, there were still barriers to trade. There were still queues at borders. Um, because countries had different regulations about uh, uh, governing goods, so the, the, the quality of goods um, uh, between uh, were not harmonised across member states. So different countries had different requirements of goods, there needed to be paperwork checked at borders, and all of this added greatly to the costs of trade. So even if um, a, a, a company um, exporting from uh, the Netherlands to Italy didn't have to pay tariffs, they did have to go through a lot of paperwork um, to get those goods across the border. And so what they decided to do was to coordinate regulations across member states. So the regulations about goods, initially it was mostly goods uh, that they focused on, uh, would be uh, harmonised across countries and that would reduce the impediments to trade even further and result in greater integration tra uh, through international trade, which was the goal. Now, apart from the customs union and the single market, the other really important push for economic integration came from the formation of the euro. So this means, so EU member states that use the euro, which is not all of them, um, but most of them, uh, they share a currency. So they have a shared monetary policy. There's one central bank, for example. But also 
they must cooperate really strongly on fiscal policy. And the, uh, the reasons for that is something that we'll be discussing in the course too. So really strong cooperation is uh, also resulting from the single currency. And of course, it also increases international trade um, if two countries have the same currency because there's no problems with uh, foreign exchange risk or um, our transactions costs of changing currencies or anything like that. So it also ties into to the uh, promotion of international trade. So EC317 is an analytical course. Uh, we will look at what economic theories predict about the effects of the economic integration I've been talking about. So the customs union, the single market, the euro, what the effects of those policies are on member countries. I won't be spending very much time describing events to you. At, the, at some points in the course, I will have to. Um, at the first couple of uh, lectures, I'll give you some background to the EU. I'll have to talk to you about the, the events that occurred during the, the euro crisis, um, for example. But most of the time, I won't be describing events. I will be showing you how to analyse them. So in the first 60% of the module, for example, it's a bit more than half of the module, we'll be using microeconomic tools and we'll be using those to analyse the effects of the customs union and the single market. In the next chunk of the course, the remaining 40% of the course will be using macroeconomic models uh, to analyse the effect of the euro. So here we'll be looking at in, in terms of microeconomic tools in the early part of the course, we'll be looking at supply and demand. In, uh, in terms of macroeconomic tools, we'll be looking at aggregate supply and aggregate demand and, uh, and related models. OK, so this is uh, clearly an analytical rather than a descriptive course. But apart from the fact that it's enjoyable to see your micro and macro tools being applied to the real world. One of the things that makes this module really interesting is its relevance for current affairs. OK, so prior to the pandemic, the two most dramatic news stories that affected all our lives had EU institutions at their core. First of all, we had the financial crisis, which quickly turned into the euro crisis. Um, that event was uh, followed by several years of austerity and enormous financial difficulty for many European citizens. Uh, that was especially true for Ireland, although we don't uh, win that particular race. I think Greece was uh, the worst, probably the worst affected country by the euro crisis. But Ireland was very badly affected by the euro crisis. Uh, so I'll be talking to you about that. And we were no sooner starting to recover from that than the UK decided to leave the EU. So we had Brexit. So again, that has consequences for all of Europe, but particularly for Ireland because of our proximity and our ties to the UK. So I'll be talking to you about that too. And in fact, I mentioned COVID. In fact, COVID will also show up in the course too, because COVID has actually precipitated some very significant changes in European policy. And so I'll have to discuss those as we go along the way as well. Um, so uh, a very interesting course from the point of view of current affairs. You should do EC317 if you want to learn how to apply the tools of economic analysis to an institution that is very important to policymaking. So this is a way of showing you how to apply your tools to the real world. You want to understand rather than just describe EU policies. So I, I won't be spending a huge amount of time describing EU policies. I'll be spending much more time explaining how to analyse them and therefore understand them fully. And you should do EC317 if you like both micro and macro and like, like the idea of combining both into one module. Um, so um, uh, I, I hope you'll consider taking the module and I'm really looking forward to seeing you um, uh, in, in the classroom.